All right. Welcome, kings and queens. Y'all, we are back and we are talking Arion Curry Spills the Tea Honey. The original Straight Note Chaser released yet another audio recording of a recorded phone call call between she and Arion. And whew, honey, she's she's continuing to spill the tea on Martel. And at this point, let me let me put out a disclaimer to the women that are continuing and voluntarily dealing with Martel in spite of. At this point, I don't want to hear nothing about Martel being a bad guy because y'all know damn well what you're signing up for. You know damn well what his reputation is, has been, used to be, still is, all that good stuff. If he did it to his ex-wife for 14 years, you know damn well he'll do it to you. Don't inbox me. Don't email me. Tell me what you was trying to do and help Martel and how you was going to be the next great white hope. I don't want to hear it. You know what you want. You know what time it is. You should not be dealing with this guy. And at this point, you get what you get. You get what you signed up for. And by the way, as a woman, it ain't your job to be out here trying to save these men anyway. So what are we doing? We are not raising grown men. We are not saving men. It is not your job to save them. It's their job to save themselves. And based on the word that it says, he who finds a wife, he who finds that means he needs to be seeking in order to find. He needs to be intentional in order to find. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and he is blessed. So ladies, ladies, get back in position. Stop trying to save her. I mean, I'm sorry, save, cater, all of this stuff. Fish, bait in these men. It's not your job. Um... We, I think we all have become very much aware of the lack of values that Martel holds or does not hold. And at this point, ladies, if you sign up for this foolishness, you know what time it is. Please don't be writing to us bloggers about how you got do uh, dogged out, did wrong, and he promised me this and that. We don't care. Any new woman, do not complain about him mistreating you because you are willing to stay. You're willing to raise your right hand and volunteer. So it is what it is. You know, when I think about it, some women really enjoy drama. They enjoy strife and they enjoy confusion. They don't want to leave. They don't want to be done. They don't want to hear how they can do better. And they have no intention of leaving. They want to play on your phone. They want to pick up the phone. They want to call you. They want to play on your phone like Ariane was doing to the original Straight No Chaser. And they want to complain. And then when you throw them a little bit of bait, they take it. But girl, I don't think he can leave you alone. Well, girl, he ain't going to never leave you alone because you know he love you. Yeah, I guess you are right. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less, okay? They just want to dump on you, vent, and go back to the bullshit. So if you find yourself with these kind of folks calling you, complaining day after day after day, listen, if nobody's told you, I'm going to tell you, your time is precious. So stop answering the phone because every time you answer, you're validating them. And in some instances, women, it's women that have been used by narcissists can actually become narcissistic themselves. There you have it. I said it. Let's talk about it. For those of you who are just tuned in or if you're new to the channel, welcome to the palace. I am Queen Sheba. I cover a variety of hot topics specific to reality television, but most importantly, I hone in on the psychological and the behavioral traits of the Black experience. Am I being too hard? Was that a bit too harsh? Because I want to make sure that I leave a little bit of space and room for error along with grace. But at the same time, I, you know, sometimes I sit back hell and I get frustrated on the behalf <laughs> of the crowd because I'm like, first of all, you grown, 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 grown woman. Many of them, your mothers. So if you can't do it for yourself, do it for your kids. And at some point, we women, I'm sorry, y'all, we got to start accepting responsibility for the shit that comes our way and the shit that we open the front door for. for. Can we talk about it? Everybody ain't taking advantage of you. Some of you are just laying down, rolling over with no command. You're just like, here, I'll do it. Send me, put me in coach. I'm ready to play. It's been a while since I've had somebody knock at my door and I be damned if I'm going to let this man leave. 
and and I like you know how people are misinformed on subjects. Let me go back. It's hard, y'all, to give women relationship advice because some women are committed to being victims, stupid, dumb. And I'm not trying to be mean. I, I'm I'm serious. What are you doing in some cases? And that's why I I tend to hesitate and steer away from the relationship topics and conversations. So it's hard. It's hard to really give women advice because she would, baby, let me tell you something. Some women don't play behind their men, even when he's wrong, wrong, wrong. I lost my other train of thought, but I also wanted to say that uh, from here on out, stop complaining if you putting up with it. Stop ruining our days. Stop calling us, okay? Now, Martel and Arion are the gifts that keep on giving. And then the girl tried to say on the opening of the conversation, I don't care. I don't care. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Ma'am. Ma'am, you care. Ma'am, there is substantial evidence that can prove and back up the fact that, oh, you care. You care very deeply. You care, you cared, and you still care. Women who don't care, move on. They don't focus, they don't comment, they don't blast, they don't leak information, they don't track, they don't trail. They could give a damn because they have moved on with their lives and they are too busy doing productive stuff, okay? She says that uh, she did confirm that Martell is broke. And that's one of the main reasons he cannot leave that show. She admitted that she doesn't work. And basically, she ain't got a pot to piss in, nor a window to throw it out. Whew. Imagine that, being a mother of two. Two children by two different men. And you won't even put in an E for effort of getting yourself together. I don't understand it. And maybe it's not for me to understand, so let me move on. This girl didn't have nothing but time on this one. And when I say time, she had a lot of time on her hands to talk and talk and talk and talk. Let's get into it. She confirmed that's that it's true. Now, this is nothing new, but we've all talked about it, that Martell does come over in the midnight hours, y'all, to get sex. But he don't preface it or tee it up that way. The way he does it, I just want to hold you. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> See? <laughs> I'm sorry. Hold on. <laughs> Y'all, this is elementary stuff. I just want to hold you. I just want to spend time with you. <laughs> I just I just want to be near you. All that good stuff, right? Okay. And they, they try to help her up. And kind of, uh, you know, gas her up a little bit. But what basically what it came down to, she's being used for her box under the pretense of he just need to, I just need to see you. I just want to hold you. That's it. That's, that's pretty sad um, for a woman that's over 33 years old. This girl said that she has been riding for him and trying to prove that he is a good guy and how dare he shit on her. How dare he betray her that he can't even conjure up a few words to give to the press that are positive when it comes to her. And that in and of itself is enough. On top of her seeing him with Sheree, she says in this call that she is done, done, done. Now we know that's a lie because we see her trailing behind Martell in the gym. We see, <laughs> hoping that he will make a cameo in those videos. We see her shouting out Martell for being good to her on her birthday, all of that good stuff. And she did admit, you got to give her credit where credit is due. She said, if Melody wasn't enough for you, then I know I'll never be enough. You right. You show right. So it's nice to hear her admit, you know, you're not enough for that man and you will never be. And if the truth be told, I got to be fair. I got to be fair. It ain't even because of you. Sweetheart, you're dealing with a narcissist. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Nobody matters to a narcissist. So I can't even knock you for saying that you would never be enough. 
You know, you didn't dug your own hole when it comes to integrity, karma, and all of that good stuff by way of just breaking up that household for those kids and the way you handled it and the way you display such grotesque and ugly, nasty, vile behavior on the internet and you thought the shit was funny. It's not funny. And I don't really think you're going to understand that until you see your kids. God forbid that you ever see your, te- your kids face the same tears, the same heartache, and the same pain that you caused. But let me move on. Because if you know that you will never be enough for him, explain this to me. Why do you continue begging him to treat you like a wife? Now that we can hear things that we're not supposed to be privy to by way of audio recordings, why do you continue to beg him? to treat you like a wife. I told you you cared. All that peacocking that you do on the internet, wife, 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 that's because you want to be one. And you want the same respect and dignity that many, I'm sorry, that many and most wives should receive and do receive. You want to be a wife, but you're not a wife. You antagonize the wife. You stepped into a situation where there was a man and a woman and you could have very well walked out of it. Okay. Melody was his one and only wife. So why are you refusing to accept your position on a bench that you signed up for on day one? Because according to him, he slept with you the first night he met you. You knew what it was. You know the game. You can't turn a hoe into a housewife. You're asking him to go back and revise and rewrite the contract when he's already signed on the dotted line and committed with his heart that he will never let you in by way of wife. And I'll get to that a little bit later when you say that his behavior is often aggressive when it comes to you. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you. See, baby, you, you, see, baby, you trying to switch the game. Pimping ain't easy. You can spit out 10, you can spit out 10 babies for him. And I'm going to tell you this, he will not ever elevate you on that roster. You are on the injured reserve list. Martell is embarrassed about you, right? Believe it or not, he is. Martell is embarrassed about you. But he enjoys you sexually because you allow him to do and act out the things he cannot do with the wife with a clean woman, a decent woman, a sophisticated woman. Y'all pull up a seat. I'm not dogging her out. And if more of us would start sitting some of these younger women down that think their box, their vagina is just everything. The best thing since gold, sliced bread. Many of them will have a reality check, pull their pants up, close their legs and go and be about their father's business. But because we hold back and we sugarcoat shit, we have women like this that get on the internet and brag about all the nasty shit that a man does to them without a ring, without acknowledgement, without respect, morality, and, and whatever else that comes with that, right? Martel is looking for a lady, a gem. And as much as you want to taunt Sheree about her age and taunt Melody for having whatever body Martel told you that she has that he doesn't like, he still treated them with an elevated level of decency and respect, something that you are still waiting for, still hurt behind, still complaining about behind closed doors. Keep in mind, this is a conversation behind closed doors. She will never admit this publicly. Keep in mind, let me say it again, behind closed doors. As much, well, let me just say this. He's given them as much as respect (laughs) as he can, considering the fact that he's a narcissist, in my opinion. Okay? So now you're on the phone. Remember I said, hang up. Don't let people play with your time on these phones. So now you're on the phone whining about how he should have and could have treated you. Baby, that ain't the play. They ain't, that's not in the playbook. That's not what we discussed. That's not what you signed up for. And to be honest, Martel knows the assignment. He's keeping the contract in place. And y'all, I'm not talking about a literal 
contract. I'm talking about a morality contract. Something we've known for quite some time, but it's really good to hear her say it. Martell runs his mouth like a little girl. He's told this girl everything, and he shared things that he should not have shared. Number one, let's just start home when he was married about his damn wife. This nigga ain't got no loyalty to nobody. Okay, but Melody got out. Uh, my concern, my next concern is for the people around him. So if you think he told Melody stuff, and if you got a kick out of that, Marcel, Maurice, and anybody else, um, pull up a seat. She knows your shit too. She knows just as much about you, true or untrue, that he has decided to give to her. So I, I hope I hope ain't nobody getting too comfortable on Love of Mary Tunsville because he told everything, and I can I, I can back that up. I know that for a fact. He told her everything, okay? Then she had the nerve to say that Melody stayed with Martell because Melody wanted the fame. It don't matter why she stayed. That's her husband. Read the marriage vows that you're hoping to take. You said you would marry him, right? You said if he got on one knee on live and asked you to marry him, you would say yes. Read the vows through thick and thin to death do us part. So bitch, if I want a little bit of fame off this, I can do that. That ain't none of your damn business, okay? By way of a wife. A wife can do whatever she wants. That ain't none of your damn business. And if you understood your place and the difference between a wife and a side piece, you wouldn't be speaking on shit that you don't know, okay? She can do what she want to do. Keep that lady name out your mouth when it comes to her marriage and how she wants to conduct herself and how she wants to be in her marriage, strategic or not. That ain't got shit to do with you. You focus on your box <laughs> and allowing Martell to hold you in the middle of the night, okay? You focus on the business that does not pay you, that keeps you unemployed, that keeps you begging and whining for attention to the original straight no chaser. How about that, okay? So let's move on. Let me ask you this. If it's true, right? Because even though that's Melody's business, let's just say she did stay for the for this fame that he could bring, then how come Martel hasn't made you famous, Arion? If the fame came from him, then where's your fame? How come he can't pull the same strings to get you on that show? Remember, she stayed for the fame. Where's yours? But wait, but wait. She actually confirmed something. And I shared it in a video about six months ago. There, I told y'all there was a plot in place between Ariane and Martel to take Melody for all she got, all she had, including that show. Okay? Remember? I told y'all. Some of y'all got mad. It was a good video. I told y'all that I thought Carlos was in it. I, I, I feel like they were all in cahoots. I talked about Marcel. I said the wives knew, but something happened and that something was God. Okay? I don't know if y'all remember. I ran that down maybe eight months ago, six to eight months ago. This is a dirty, evil woman. And let me tell you why. I told you this lady, in my opinion, is not above committing a crime behind this man if she gets what she wants and needs. And that's consistent affection, consistent attention, consistent affirmation and validation. She refuses to adhere to the fact that she is dealing with a bona fide narcissist. And the only reason, in my opinion, that someone would be this naive and stupid is because if you somewhat of a narciss narcissist yourself, so it's like a damn battle, you know, like the battle of the bands with eight, when HBCU bands go head to head, we're watching two narcs fight it out. And both of them are committed to bringing the other down and forcing the other to do what either one of them does not want to do, period. That's what you're witnessing, okay? I don't believe she's above committing a crime if she, gets him, uh, if she gets what she needs from him. If you listen to her intently on how they were supposed to be together, she heated and hot behind that. 
She feels some kind of way about that. They had their whole freaking future planned out and they were supposed to ride off into the sunset. But let me tell you something, girl. Martell ain't never had no intentions of being with you. Martell let you parade yourself around in that cheap ass dress on Tasha K. And he used you like a damn Muppet and like a puppet. Okay, that's it. And he will continue to use you. And whatever comes your way, come what may, you have freely and Okay. And if you keep on and if you don't course correct sometime soon, you are going to be telling this story to a journalist from behind bars. Y'all, this is crazy. If it ain't, I don't know what it is. There was a, po a point um, in a discussion that she began to talk about Marceau and his cheating. Now, I got to be fair. The girl is not lying. She ain't making that up. I told you a little bit earlier, he does tell her everything. She knows everything about those Scott boys, particularly Maurice. And his many, 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 many women, allegedly, according to Martel. Y'all better, when, when you go back and Martel said, both of y'all got all these girlfriends. Remember he said 20 something girlfriends each. Yeah, we know he's obsessed with the number 20, but he was not. Okay, Martel knows a lot. They all know a lot on each other. The only difference is Martel has spill the beans and have continued to spill the beans openly when throwing temper tantrums and the Scots haven't said anything and everybody bow at his, they bow. What is it? Becking point. I don't know the word I'm trying to say. Y'all know what I'm saying, but they bow down to him because he knows too much. And then she's his backup. She's a vault of secrets. And yeah, Maurice, Maurice, Maurice. Ooh, Maurice. Maurice. That's all I'm going to say. She makes a good point. Marceau, she's about to leave. She's leaving if she can get her money up. The problem is Marceau is dirty. He strategically placed Letitia on the hook for millions and gazillions of dollars. And Letitia is sitting on a debt that she can't leave, unfortunately. And he literally threw her behind under the bus during that court disposition. Y'all... Uh, that was, I think it was, yeah, Trending Topics did an excellent job of covering that. Oh, that man threw that lady under the bus. And if you don't see what time it is, I covered that seven months ago, that he was setting her up to take the charge for fraud by saying that she owns 85% of the business. When somebody comes out strong like that on a syndic on a national, and they mention, are you not filming a show? And y'all, all of that is in the court transcript. And Letitia is mentioned as being 85% of owner. He just changed it in March of this year where he removed, well, her name was never on the old one. That Well, I never saw her name, but he led and he put that out there. And he mentioned in co court, she was 85% owner then. Letitia, this is very bad for you. This is very bad for a lot of women. No different than Shirley freaking Strawberry. It's just a little bit more sophisticated. But let me tell you something, Letitia, and I'm going to go off down a rabbit hole. You are no different than the uh, Jen Shaw's, the Teresa Judices. Everybody, at some point, when them, when them people, when them fans come knocking on your door, you going down with these men. So all it is, you trying to ruin my marriage, honey, your husband has ruined your marriage. Your husband has put you in a position where you probably couldn't get credit if you wanted to for a carrot. You hear me? And I'm not talking about carrot gold. I'm talking about a carrot, a vegetable. You have let this man talk you into signing your name on a dotted line for jobs, projects, money. Let me, let me move on. We're going to cover. I already covered that. I hardly talk about the Scots anymore because I can see what's coming a mile away. Keep it, keep up with my videos. Cause I'd be trying to put stuff in front of y'all way ahead of time, but okay. Yeah. But Marceau strategically placed Letitia on the hook for something that's going to be very hard for her to walk away. Okay. I think the reason that Martel keeps a close finger and a pulse on Ariana is because he's scared as well that she's going to tell everything one day. Because if she does, no one, and I mean nobody, is going to be around him, including you, Carlos. She knows things, okay? She didn't lie. 
about Marcel, and she damn sure didn't lie about Maurice. And I'm going to leave that right there because I don't believe Kimmy would be able to handle that. I'm going to leave that. Now, here's my thing, Arion. If you're going to tell it, tell it because Marcel finessed the fuck out of you. He finessed you too. He talked your ass right out of stepping down from going on that show. You almost had it. You almost had it. You was right there. And Martel and Marceau double teamed your ass. That's why I don't understand these side pieces or these women that come in from the back door or come off the bench and think that you better and think that is something different about your twat because it isn't. You got finesse just like everybody else and those niggas ganged up on you. They got on the phone. Okay, bro, she really want to do this and da, 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 da. All right, bet. We going to do this. If I say it, she going to think of like, you know, I don't want her to get on and blah, blah, blah. You tell her. All right, I got it. Because you know if she get on there, she going to talk about your shit. She going to tell Tisha. She going to talk about my reason. It's up from there. I got it. And he got it. So he finessed you too. So while you talk about everybody else that ain't enough, that got tricked, that's stupid, put yourself in that equation. Because you got walked like a dog by Marcel. Martel, and then you you said that, yeah, he he don't play when it comes to Arion. He is aggressive behind me. Let's back up. Let's back up. Because I don't think you understand the symbolism of it all. Martel doesn't want Marceau touching you. Not because he loves you. It's because of your host status. <laughs> okay. See, first of all, if you were on, on that elevated level that I talked about a little bit earlier, when I say as much as you try to make fun of Sheree's age and Melody's body, there's still a level of elevation. There's still a level of respect that he can't go beneath. Okay. And men like Marcel will not even try to touch those women because those, those women, they walk in a room, they command respect. And that's what you get those type of women. But with hoes, shit, they up. It's up. Anybody can touch them. So Marceau don't want him, uh, Martel doesn't want Marceau touching you because he's not done with your box yet. Okay. It's like ordering food and, and somebody say, you going to eat all that. And they'll say, I'll give you what I don't want. <laughs> Let me finish first. Okay. So. Martel is not ready to allow Marcel to sleep with you. Hoes are a fair game. And depending on how a woman is introduced into the friend group, determines how the other man treats her. It's like a signal that goes off. You were no different than all them linebackers that you talked about. The hoes, they may have had bigger backs, but all of you, had one thing in common. They wanted all of your boxes. You were in the same room as the hoes and not the wives. And I just wanted to remind you of that. Every time you fix your mouth to try to make yourself out to be more than what you really are. And you said that had Melody left, he would have been with you. Well, she's gone now. What's the problem? How come he's not out frolicking freely about the cabin with you? If that hypothesis is true and had Melody left, y'all would have been together. I told y'all they were plotting. He got time. He could still be with you. He did it with Sheree. He was frolicking in New York with Sheree. He was on a whole damn live cooking in a, uh, cooking with Belinda in the kitchen. He was with the girl at Stormy Party. He was kind enough to walk her away to her car. <laughs> the girl on this season of Love and Marriage, Huntsville, when they went to Houston. And I think I know who that is, but I'm going to sit on it. Um, so where were you? Yeah, like Keisha Cole say, where were you? We'll wait because Melody's gone. Now what's the excuse? Okay. She did admit that Martel uses fake accounts to harass Melody. We've been doing that. She said that Martel, depending on the specific, specificity, y'all, come on, specificity. I'm trying to say specifics. I'm going to leave that in there. I ain't going to even uh, cut it out. I want y'all to hear me messing up. 
But depending on how specific uh, the fake account is, she knows it's Martel. When he's talking about Melody's body, oh yeah, that's Martel. She and uh, Original Straight No, Ch no Chaser joked about that, that Martel does harass Melody from fake accounts we know. And so do you. So do you. Because you were going to release that revenge P, like the criminal that you are, from a fake account. Okay? She also says that Martel told her, hmm, very interesting, that he didn't like his wife's body. He wasn't attracted to Melody's body. Okay. So which one is it, Martel? Was it that you didn't like her body or she was only 85%? We'll wait. So there was one thing the original Straight No Chaser said that had me kind of looking at her sideways and typically bloggers do not call other bloggers out. And I don't even know if I'm going to call, I'm going I'm to say a call out. I ain't got no problem with what another woman does that's positive, whether it's engaging in her own health and wellness, her self-care, her professional uh, elevation, her personal, whatever it is that gets her to a place where she needs to be, mind, body, and spirit, I say go for it. And I, I really didn't understand the part about chiming in about, oh, she only working out because Sheree's working out. Hey, whatever it takes, right? Listen, there's a lot of beautiful women that motivate me. Hell, I saw a video of Megan Thee Stallion working out and I was like, you know what? I'm going to up the ante in my workout. I'm pushing 45 minutes. Let me go and boost it up. I can stand to do a 15 more minutes, whatever it takes. So, um, so what if she was motivated by Sheree, which I don't think that's the case. I mean, cause if we go back and pull the tapes, uh, and I don't mean the audio tapes. If we go back to that time frame that y'all were talking about, Melody was actually walking in New York Fashion Week. So you need to be in shape. You need to have your shit right and tight. So in my opinion, that's why Melody was on her grind and her hustle, because you need to look like where you're headed. And when you're headed to success on a New York uh, fashion runway, you need to walk in looking like you took the assignment seriously. So that's what I had to say about that part. Arion piles on and cosigns, and she admits that Martel is obsessed, literally obsessed with how he wants his women to look and how he believes they should look. He likes them to be bare and basic. Bare and basic. And she equates this to them being better. Oh, I don't even mess with weave and all that. She equates her not having weave in her head. We've seen weave in your head. But okay. If that's, if that's the lie you tell and you stick into it, whatever makes you sleep better at night. Okay. Whatever. But she equates that to her being a better woman in his eyes. And if the truth be told, Arion, this really gives me more insight into, ah, uh, uh, I'm going to say your, uh, IQ level for lack of a better word, because girl, this is simply what narcissists do. They slowly deconstruct you. They tell you you are beautiful just the way you are. And before you realize it, ain't nobody checking for you, girl. They don't want you to adorn any enhancements and not because you're beautiful. Naturally, you could be mad dog ugly, but they're going to tell you you're beautiful. And I'm not saying she's an ugly girl. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when you're dealing with the narcissist, you take everything at face value. As a matter of fact, you close your ears, you glue them shut, and you don't listen to anything they have to say because it's all a lie. It's all an illusion. It's all built to satisfy some evil, dark agenda that they have, okay? They don't want any enhancements because they want your ass in a corner by yourself. The goal is to make you appear to be less attractive, okay? There's a video that I did. If you take a look at this video, I commented on her hairstyle. And the reason why I commented on her hairstyle, because a lot of you were talking about her bun, her bun. And then when I really started to think about it and assess it, I said, ah, we're dealing with the narcissist. If she's refusing to take that bun off her head, it's because he told her how beautiful she is with it. And she's bought into the narrative, not knowing. And the sad thing about it, y'all, she did buy into it. She, she did buy into the narrative. I made that video about a year ago. And you really have to understand how things work with narcissists. 
Um, because this girl fell for everything this man has said and told her a hook, line, and sink. And then you want to talk about Sheree and compare yourself to Sheree that if, well, if he really liked her, if he was really that into her, then her hairstyles would change. That's how I know he ain't really checking for her. Girl, you sound like a ninth grader. You sound like a ninth grader. Okay. What Sheree, what does Sheree look like letting the likes of a Martell Holt tell her how to wear her hair? He's trying to be on her show. Okay. Martell is frolicking with the likes of an Arianne Curry. Why the, would Sheree listen to, you know what? Let me move on. Girl, you don't even sound right. Y'all, this was a good one. I got to give it to the original straight no chaser. This was a good one now. Listen, when I sit down and I pull out my, my, my pen and my paper, I wrote, I, listen, I love to listen intently. This was a really good one, but let's go ahead and wrap it up. Arion said that Carlos is the real puppet master. Oh yes, honey. She said, if y'all want to be mad at somebody, be mad at Carlos King because he's the one who broke. No, he's the one that broke up Melody and Martel's family. Now y'all, I ain't asked y'all what you think in a while while I'm giving my insight on this. What do y'all think about her saying that Carlos King is the real puppet master? He's the one pulling strings. Before you answer that, keep in mind that I said that Martel tells this girl everything. Everything. Now, we're not going to make her out to be a complete liar. Maybe she has access to information that we don't know publicly. Now that we've put all that together, integrated all of that. What are your thoughts? You think she's full of it? You think she may have a point here? What are your thoughts? And considering the fact, I don't care why, I don't care what their reason is. If she did not have some type of leverage or dirt on you, why would you allow her to film? You see what I'm saying? There's only one or two things. She got dirt on you or she got dirt on you. You still kept Melody in the dark about it. And if she got dirt on you and you were tricking her into filming, it's because you she still has dirt on you about something you've said or done to Melody, period, point blank. So when it comes down to this, y'all, please stop thinking that people are above bad behavior, that people are above deceit because they're not. They're not. They all had it out for Melody at some point. Now, it's really nice to see Carlos uh, and Melody worked together. And when she gave him that, that award, I'm not above hashing out differences or walking together in collaboration and, and reestablishing black excellence. But at the time that we're talking about when these tapes were released, yeah, yeah. Y'all need to acknowledge some of that own Carlos, Marcel, um, uh, Marcel still being messy. I'm gonna cover that. <laughs> when I do my love and uh, marriage, uh, my love and Huntsville marriage uh, review with him talking about Melody and, and what she's doing and what she ain't doing and just really harping bad and negativity on black women. Okay. Just because you keep your neck on Letitia's neck, your foot on Letitia's neck doesn't mean every other black woman is going to let you come in and suppress and oppress her, her voice. But what do y'all think? because they allowed her to film and all of them were involved in it. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. But I told y'all that a while back. I said, listen, they're all in on it. So this is really nothing new. This is so the takeaway is, uh, she's out for vengeance and there's a couple of things, three items in my opinion that she's aiming for. She's aiming for, and I feel like her specific goals are to number one, compete head on for attention, her versus Martell. If you're not going to give me attention, I'm going to go get attention. I am going to throw you under the bus on the internet. And not only that, if I can't have you, can't nobody else have you. You give Sheree your attention. I am going to get on the internet. I am going to tell everybody how you lick me from the front to the back, and I'm going to draw all of the attention to me. So I told you it's narc versus narc when it comes to those two. Number two, in my opinion, her second goal is you should have told Own that you were not filming without me. She 
fell for it. Remember I told you she drank the Kool-Aid, the cult juice. She thought she was a star player. We should have been together. All of the lies, all of the sweet nothings that you whispered to me when we were pillow talking, I thought I was up next to that. Wrong, wrong, wrong girl. She's upset that he did not put his foot down. And let me tell you something, Arion, the joke has always been on you. He was never going to put his foot down. And had he gotten that $1 million from own, girl, if you think you're lonely now, wait until tonight, girl. He would have whisked, wind and died another woman on a private jet, but I guarantee you it would not have been you, period, point blank. <laughs> You would have been on the internet like the rest of us watching from afar. The third goal that I think she has in mind is to punish him for, <laughs> hold on. I'm supposed to keep a straight face. I'm supposed to keep a straight face. Hold on. <laughs> Y'all bear with me. Wait, this is hilarious. <laughs> Cause girl, you ain't gonna never be able to live this one down. <laughs> oh my God. Get serious. All right. <clears throat> the third goal I think she has in mind is to punish him for orchestrating her national global public YouTube embarrassment after she went on Tasha K to attack Melody. Girl, he set you up. You can never, ever have that erased. You embarrassed yourself to the point of no return. And guess who? tricked you and finessed the hell out of you like they have been doing from